Welcome to DCTP.TV from Berlin, from the Campus Party 2012. My next guest is Amir Taki. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. So you 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 big into bitcoins? Hmm. Yeah, I've been into bitcoins for like quite a while now. And, uh, quite a while means uh, maybe like two and a half years or so. Uh, what what made you start? What 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 at what point do you got interested? So as with like all things, it's like always very complicated how you get involved in w where you go in your life next. But in in there were there was like defining moments that turned me into Bitcoin. But there is also like a backlog of like my entire history. So if, if we're talking about like what made me switch to Bitcoin, yeah. you know, it's very simple on the surface thing. But if we're talking about why I switched to the Bitcoin, it's many years of things. You know, I spent I've spent maybe like. Uh, I spent 10 years working, writing free software, open yeah. source software. And I have an incredible commitment to openness and f and freedom. And uh, Bitcoin is like something which is a piece of technology which can really free up uh, finance and bring massive social benefits to people. We'll talk about it. Just Bitcoin is a, is a virtual currency. Yeah. That means you don't have any coins or... It's also Bills. one of the biggest, so that's what what's so special about it. Like so, biggest. That's that's the point I wanted to get to. Describe the 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 day to day ecosystem that exists. Mm. It's not a virtual currency in the sense it's virtual. Uh, it's not used, but you can actually pay with bitcoins. You can exchange them. You can get buy stuff with it. Describe this ecosystem that is existing already. What can you buy with? Where can you buy? Where can you? When you pay with ecos uh, with with bitcoins, I read there's a, a credit card for for Bitcoin uh, in the making. So just paint the big picture. Mm. So Bitcoin is not like one piece of software or one organization. This is how it is. It's a big ecosystem of different cooperating systems and pieces of software and groups and community and so on. And uh, the way it, the way it works is. Uh, there was like one small piece. So for many years, uh, the hacker movement was concerned with the money problem. And the hacker movement is really uh, a group of people who's, who believe that we live in a science-based and technological-based society. And it's very dangerous when that science and technology is not in the purview of common people. For instance, when you go to a doctor, you want to know exactly what is wrong with you to get treatment. And so there was all this, this discussion about the money problem and lots of different proposals put forward. And then, but there were still some missing puzzle pieces. And then finally, these puzzle pieces started to come together and then Bitcoin was born from that, really. And uh, from this tiny system, which first started out, uh, so it usually happens that when you get technology developed, it's uh, usually very generic. So with this original piece of Bitcoin software, everyone acted as a merchant, a user, uh, a miner of the so software and you know a node in the network and all these different roles. But as Bitcoin has grown, these roles have specialized so much that now if I look at the mathematics involved in mining, I don't really fully understand. It's a field in itself. That's because there's a lot of economic, ba there's a lot of economic uh, uh, force there pushing Bitcoin in all these different directions. Okay, but we come to the, uh, to the, to the, to the, to uh, the software aspect and how, how, how mm. it works a little later. But first, for those who don't know Bitcoin, I mean, you, you, uh, you founded an exchange in Tasango, right? And, but I can pay with Bitcoins already. Where can I buy stuff with, what can I buy with, with Bitcoin? Well, you can even go here in Berlin, there are like restaurants and bars which accept Bitcoin. Okay, so what like else? I Mostly, like the real benefit is is on the internet, right? So uh, there was uh, it was in August last year when the Department of Justice put pressure on uh, on on WikiLeaks, and they had their payment options. You know, in a, within a day, like v, uh, WikiLeaks, Amazon, uh, Visa, Mastercard, PayPal, Swiss Bank, and their domain registrar were shut down under pressure from the U.S. Department of Justice, and the only form of payment that they could accept was Bitcoin. So that is like an example of Bitcoin where it's being used. Okay, and of course there are in 
exchanges. So that means we, mm. you can you can pay with bitcoins and get dollars. Yeah. Is that right? Of course. Okay, so let's start. How does it how does it work? How do I start when I want to use bitcoins? How do I start? What do I do first? So we can look back at the history of bitcoins to see how it started. And it really began in the beginning that oh there's this experiment, oh this is cool, we have some scarce uh, units of money. And people started to trade them amongst themselves. There's a very early case where someone bought a pizza for 30,000 bitcoins, and now that's worth like a third of a million dollars. And people began to trade among themselves. And then people started to set up exchanges, platforms, which enable people who are trading bitcoins to do, them, do that more efficiently and more effectively. And then that's when the value of bitcoin started to take off. Because the reason why you value five euros is because you know you can go to shops and you can buy something with it. And all of this infrastructure that exists around Bitcoin is really just uh, enforcing this fact and giving people confidence in the currency. I mentioned WikiLeaks where WikiLeaks is uh, the only way of supporting WikiLeaks was through Bitcoin. You know, there are many examples of these use cases for Bitcoin which you can only use using a system like Bitcoin. And so that is why there is always going to be value in this currency, because there is always going to be a demand for this currency. Okay, but how do I start? If I want to use Bitcoins, what do I do first? Well, there's like, there's several options. There's, there's a website called localbitcoins.com and there's a bunch of others. You can find someone in Berlin here and you can trade Bitcoins with them for real but, euros. But, but I don't have Bitcoins. Yeah, but you can give them euros and they would give you bitcoins. Okay, that's the first. Right. And how do I get, since it's no coin or bill, how do I, where do I see the bitcoins I got? Uh, well, they're digital money, so you'd see it in your bitcoin client. So I would install a client? No. Okay, and then I see, okay, I got some bitcoins. Okay, what else? What else can I do? What is mining? Uh, yeah, mining is a very... I wouldn't recommend you to get bitcoins through mining. There's no... <laughs> There's no economic benefit from that. But mining is like how uh, the network functions. So the, the introduction of money into Bitcoin, the way new money is introduced is through the functioning of the network. The way the network functions is uh, the people who back up and give security in the network are rewarded with uh, Bitcoins. Okay, that means, mining means basically calculation. All right. I, 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 I install the software on my, on my PC and it, it downloads raw data from, from, uh, from, mm. uh, from the network and calculates it. Right, Sees you're investing, you invest some uh, resources. Um, electricity elec uh, stuff. Because electricity costs money. Costs money. Right. And so what do, I, what, what do I calculate there? What kind of data do I download and what is the benefit I give to the network by calculating, by mining? So the way the network works is uh, the more people who are doing solving these mathematical riddles are securing the network. They're doing a valuable service. And what it is, is if you're solving mathematical riddles, these mathematical calculations, you're using processor cycles. And if you're using processor cycles on your computer, you're using electricity. And if you're using elect electrical power, you're costing yourself money. So it's like people are investing money to secure the network. Okay. And Causing and without these calculations, the, the, the network wouldn't work. Well, it's the core of Bitcoin and what makes it function. It's, there's all these mathematical algorithms. So it is, Bitcoin is a system that's not based off of you know, laws and legislation where you have some guys, some politicians uh, giving decrees from Whitehall or Washington about how the system should or will function. It works purely through mathematics, cryptography. It's a, technological scientific based system there is no web of trust it is not one of these kind of systems where it's that you say oh i trust this guy and i trust this guy and i trust no it's purely based off of algorithms and when i want to give you money you have to give me a long number which right. is your it's a pseudonym right it's not your name mm. but a long number and i can transfer money to your number with my bitcoin client is yeah, so they're called an address. So you know you have, you have an email address. Ah, okay. You can send uh, emails to an email address. You have Bitcoin addresses. But the thing is, with Bitcoin, is you can create as many of these as you want. They're really, it's really easy to create and create hundreds of them. 
and nobody there is no connection between your identity and these Bitcoin addresses. But if someone makes the connection, so he finds the number mm. and he sees, well, it's my number, then he can view all transactions I've ever made mm. on the system, right? Yeah. So, you, so let's say I publish my Bitcoin number on my website and say, well, this is my Bitcoin number, then everybody can see what Philip paid or bought or mined or any transaction mm. I did in the last... But that's why you'd use multiple of them. Ah. So you, ideally you should use like a new one for every transaction. Okay. So it, that way like if someone just see, they just see the transaction they made the to ones. you. Okay. However, there are, so, there are some cases where it makes sense that you want to see people to see your history. So you might use one address for lots of payments. For instance, if you're an artist and you want donations, you know, it's not so bad to have people see, you know, you even see people do, get tips on the street. They put a hat full of money to encourage other donations. Okay. And why should people trust this currency? That just a currency is a, a thing you why? believe in, yeah. Why? Because uh, just like you can read German or English, I can read uh, source code, I can read C++. And I, can, I don't need to trust anyone. I can download this source code and I can see what it says myself. When I first discovered Bitcoin, I found it on some, on, on SourceForge, you know, like some backend project you know, back alley project. And there are tons of these projects that people make and you just think, oh, they're, they're not worth anything, they're silly. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should give it a chance. And I started looking through the source code and I was like, wait, that's strange. And then suddenly everything made sense. It all fit together and I was like, Phew. and then for days afterwards, like my mind was on fire. Like it was absolutely incredible that I could actually see how this source code works. And it's not depending on the actions of anyone else. It's not depending on a central party. It's completely based off my own actions, you know? And uh, wh 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 how, how do you think mm. Bitcoin will change the, the, the world of finance? Dude, I think like, I, don't th I think Bitcoin is really like a massive jump over anything that we have currently. It's like, it's unbelievable how, so actually the, SEPA payment system in Europe is not too bad your fees are not, but like compared to the rest of the, the rest of the world has a pretty terrible financial system like the UK banking sector is incredibly inefficient I've been working with banks for the last like year and a half of my life and you really don't hate banks until you have to work with them every like even now I'm having problems with the bank banks because they're trying to shut us down they're causing us problems they can't handle more than 200 payments a day it's like how are you meant to to do any kind of build any kind of systems off of these really inefficient systems that have chargebacks that have tons of problems with them that have that have scams and frauds it's like that woman in Russia who was uh, who was asked to leave the country Anastasia uh, Reshalemenko because uh, she wrote this article about how Ralph Eisen Bank was engaging in money laundering for Russian oligarchs. And we, it's people talk about Bitcoin being used for money laundering, but we're in the heyday of money laundering. It's really not that difficult to launder money. And, and so you get like governments and organizations piling on all this regulation, which really doesn't do anything. It stops just stupid people who launder very small amounts. And all that, all that it does is it makes uh, payments online infeasible it's really difficult to do any to do any kind of online I don't know if you ever tried to accept online payments but it, it's just <laughs> it's just not and how, what will Bitcoin will well anybody can set up Bitcoin like tomorrow like today you don't need to ask anyone so you just you just run you just that's the efficiency part so I can easily receive get money online mm. and I can easy pay online yeah what else what about the middlemen there are no middlemen so the fact is, is uh, Bitcoin is international and it has no concept of borders. And so like I have this friend in Iran who contributes a huge amount to the free software movement, but because of one attack by one politician, or another politician, I'm talking about the US embargo on Iran, he cannot participate in the global economy and that's incredibly unfair. And it's not, it's not like the Iranian government cares. They don't care. They're, rather, they're happy to drag the country down to the floor. It's always the citizens that... Uh, are harmed by these kinds of things, you know? And that's the thing with Bitcoin. I can send right now, like money, instantly, and it arrive within an hour in Japan. 
and, and I don't have to pay any fees. I don't have to go for any middleman because the two things I cannot emphasize enough about Bitcoin is first that it's decentralized and distributed. You know, there is, there is nobody controls the infrastructure. There no are one no to, to take down and stop the system. To stop you making payments however you want. The second thing is that it's a system based off mathematics. So it's, it's a system that is not subject to the flaws and fallibilities and social failings of people who run it. You know, it can't be corrupted. That's why you said earlier you can see the transaction on the Bitcoin address because it's a transparent system and it's publicly vettable by... But there, there, there have been failures in, 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 in exchanges, right? Mm. The, 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 the yeah, but this is problems with private companies who were insecure, you know? It's not like if uh, the Bank of America collapsed yet tomorrow, we, would th we wouldn't say, oh, the US dollar is, is it? Uh, right. Yeah. Or and this even happened like, or, or when uh, Visa got hacked and they had like 18 million accounts leaked on the internet it's by Lulsec. Yeah, okay. Right, we didn't say, oh, this is a problem with the Euro. This is a okay. problem with Visa. And since you run an exchange, that means mm -hmm. I can transfer your exchange bitcoins and you transfer dollars to my bank account. No, no, we, it's just a platform. Like someone transfers euros to the exchange, someone transfers bitcoins and they can put in trades with each other and then it just matches them up. So it's automated. So if I, if I, if uh, I, I can transfer 100 euros and I get back the actual amount of bitcoins. No, you get on the site, it says 100 euros in your account and yeah. then you place an order and someone else has to place another order and then you match and then it does the swap. Okay. So for instance, if you wanted to meet in Germany with someone, uh, you can send them, hey man, let's meet up. You spend like five minutes going, changing. But then there are like maybe people who like want to trade every day lots of amounts or they don't want to, it's too expensive for them to travel to meet someone. Yeah. So they just go for an exchange, you know? Okay, it but the interesting question is, since mm. it is an alternative currency and it, it, it poses a threat to, to some existing systems, not all about finance, etc. Do people, do authorities come to you and say, well, this action is not a good idea? Mm. Well, it's, it's really funny because last year, so there's this drugs market called the Silk Road where people can buy drugs using Bitcoin. And then like last summer, this US senator came out saying, oh, it's a, Bitcoin is a scheme for drug trafficking networks and it should be shut down. And we're going to see that it gets shut down immediately. It's a year later and nothing has happened. Nothing can happen. They can't shut it down. And, uh, and then also, but then in the UK, so I do a lot with the, like UK uh, institutions because of this UK exchange. And the cybercrime police hates us. They went, went on Channel 4 saying, oh, you know, it's, it's like a thing for criminals or whatever. But then weirdly, the Financial Services Authority, the FSA in the UK, loves us. So they, they, sent, they always helped us out a lot saying, oh, you know, this regulation applies to you, this doesn't, you have to do this and this. The thing to realize is the government is not one monolithic entity. There's lots of different small groups. And why do they like you? I think because the FSA are the regulators for the financial industry. So they probably see a lot of the stuff that happens, like a lot of the corruption, and they, they try and legislate. They have an adversarial relationship with finance. And when they see a system like Bitcoin, they intuitively understand what it's about, that it can bring massive social benefits. They see, the, they see some of the less, uh, they see some of the cursory uses of Bitcoin that are, are less uh, desirable, but they don't immediately dismiss it. They say, okay, this is a system which you judge on its own merits, and you say, oh, wow, this can actually do a lot to improve the wealth of people's life. W what are the curses of, of Bitcoin they might not like? Well, like this drugs market or yeah. money laundering, because which it's- Which is an issue. Uh, I really don't think so. It's, I don't think it's that much of an issue because you still have to go through, uh, you, know, you know, for instance, if, if I were to come to you with a big bag of money, 50 pound notes, yeah. and I, I would say to you, hey, I want to trade that for Bitcoins, that would be illegal, right? That's money laundering. So the, the same laws that apply to cash 
you know, really still apply to Bitcoin. And if it's possible with Bitcoin, it's possible with cash. But what do you do as an exchange if someone says, well, I have here 150,000 pounds sterling, I'd like, give me Bitcoins, please. Yeah, well, it goes through a bank which does KYC, like know your customer. So? Well, so that means that uh, if there is, so the way it usually works in finance is that if there's an, if some bad money originates uh, here and then it goes through a whole chain of Uh, financial transactions, all of the institutions that are party to that transaction get penalized. But the one that at this end, where it originates, gets penalized the most, and then maybe at this one doesn't get penalized hardly at all, and then it, ver it goes like a slope downwards. So that's how it works. And how do you know that the, 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 the British regulator likes you? Do they, do they write you letters? Did you talk to them? How, how do you know? Well, just because they're very helpful. In well, how do they help? Like. Uh, expressly telling us like what to do and what applies to us and and so on and, and where do you see this Bitcoin going is it is it just another currency or will it be the currency of the world one day where, where do you see it's going well it's a uh, like the in Bitcoin there's like different people who have different views about it there's some people who say our oh, Bitcoin's going to replace Uh, national currencies and then others say oh you know it will complement the existing yeah. thing just to make people's lives better you know like I, I personally think the you know when you like see these scientists in the 40s and 50s and they're talking about they're talking about things that are going to happen in the future and at the time people a lot of people think that they're crazy it's just way out there but years later you see what they said has come true and With Bitcoin, there are a lot of people right now who are saying there are things you can do with Bitcoin you could never do with normal currency or finance. And that this is going to bring about like massive changes and massive social benefits that we have never seen before. And, and some of them you mentioned, like cutting mm. out the middleman, very efficient system. Well, if we're talking about the very distant future, I'm thinking about things like uh, public infrastructure. So public health care, hospitals and education are, are things that I appreciate and think are important for a society. I mean, they're good things, you know, and I, I like and, and use them. But we always thought that if you needed to fund these things, you needed an authority in the middle. Well, now with Bitcoin, it's, it's possible due to the way this technology works to have publicly funded infrastructure like public health care without a central authority. That for me is immensely fascinating and interesting that you could create public infrastructure without an authority because you know in the early part of the early part of this century in the early 2000s like hundreds of thousands of people flooded into the capitals of Georgia Kyrgyzstan and the Ukraine and they forced the old corrupt leaders from power and in each of these cases nobody was seen to be in charge but then like journalists discovered that people had used uh, the internet to network uh, and connect with each other and to affect a uh, radical fast social change uh, and they simply only had a self-determination for uh, freedom and exp self-expression and this is something like I well it, there's a there's like one scientist I really think is fantastic like there's this woman called Ada Lovelace and in 1846 she wrote this paper about Charles Babbage's uh, Babbage machine. So Charles Babbage invented, designed the first computer. And in some respects, it was far better than the early computers that came in the 40s and 50s, which were invented here in Berlin by Konrad Zusa. In fact, like Babbage's machine was Turing complete. The early computers were not, for instance. Mm -hmm. He invented a computing device in the 1800s. It never got built because Charles Babbage was a social retard. Like he would constantly argue with his engineers and he would constantly change the design. The guy was just really difficult to work with. And Babbage only saw the device as being like something used to like calculate mathematical sums for science, you know, to do theoretical things. Whereas Ada realized something. She realized that if you have numbers that can represent quantities, now these numbers can actually represent symbols. 
And if you have symbols and symbol manipulation, you can use that to model and simulate reality. And she writes this paper in 1846, 1846, in which she is saying that uh, this device that Babbage has made will be, will be able to create wonderful works of graphics or compose complex pieces of uh, music. She even goes further. She, she, calls, she calls programming the calculus of differentials. And in her old Victorian writing style, she says, uh, this cal cal uh, differential of calculus is such an interesting and fascinating topic in itself that it will become its own topic of study. She's talking about computer science. And what does it have to do with Bitcoins? Well, it's simply that I'm saying that this is that in every age you see people talking about things that will happen in the distant future, and it's out so outlandish and out there. But you, when you start to see a common mass of people who are involved in the forefront of technological development talking about these things. You really have to think that they're, they're saying something that has a truth to it. And when people say that Bitcoin is something that, that is going to revolutionize the uh, finance industry, like it's going to change the way we think about money forever, you really have to think that they're saying something that has a modicum of truth to it. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on a mission. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit of a long-winded way of explaining. But no, 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 it's okay. Yeah. But you don't think it's going away, right? No, never. There's, there's always going to be need to like, do these transactions with Bitcoin that you can't do with anything else. So, like, another one is like on Reddit, uh, there are these girls who take photographs of themselves naked and put them up with a Bitcoin address written on their body, and people can send them tips. And uh, you can never do that with PayPal; they'd shut you down instantly. And I think that's super cool because it's consensual. It's safe and it's anonymous. Nobody knows who they are. So I'm, f I'm fine. It, like, at least they're not going to like a strip club or some seedy places. Okay. I mean, thank you very much for coming. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.